Hey everybody, this is Austin and welcome back to the channel. Now, as most of you know, my videos can be very long-winded, detailed, and pretty much impossible to watch in one sitting. So today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Now, hundreds of you, <laughs> I mean, I really mean it, hundreds of you have asked me how to model carved top guitars in Fusion 360. And today I'm gonna show you how to do that in under 15 minutes. Now, full transparency, this isn't going to be a precise replica of your favorite carved top guitar design, but rather just an introduction to the basic techniques and practices that you're gonna to need to be familiar with in order to be successful. And hopefully, maybe I can inspire you to go ahead and give it a try on your own design. So I've already said enough. Let's dig right in. All right, so quick disclaimer. I'm not gonna pretend for a second that this is necessarily the right way to do this for every type of design. Each design is a little bit different and might require a different technique. However, the way I'm going to show you right now is the fastest way I've found to get a quick and clean result that I can modify easily to get my, you know, creative juices flowing. And so that way I can really arrive at the design I want to much quicker. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch on the top plane. And let's go ahead and reorient the sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a basic and very classic guitar outline. And in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and use splines. Now, I always prefer control point splines over fit point splines. So let's go ahead and draw this. So I'm just gonna come out, give myself a bit of a recurve. That, and we'll do one more like that. Okay, and let's edit this a little bit. So I'm gonna make these horizontal because what we're gonna do is we're gonna mirror this side over to the other side so it's symmetric. And let's adjust this a little bit to get it looking a little bit cleaner. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and mirror this over. So I need to create a center line. I'm gonna use a line right here and I'm gonna leave it not as a construction line and that will be important later. So we can go create mirror and we're gonna mirror this sketch across this line hit okay and now we can see that you know maybe we need to update our design a little bit because once we see the whole thing maybe it doesn't look quite as good as we thought so let's update that a little bit i'm gonna make these sections a little bit flatter maybe okay i think that's going to work for now let's update that there we go i think that's going to work for now that's a relatively classic uh, body shape, nothing, nothing too fancy. Let's just go and hit OK, and sketch one is done. So now what we need to do is we need to draw a center line, and this is going to represent the cross section of the center of our guitar, what that profile is going to look like. So we can just sketch on the side plane, and let's project in this line. So click that line, P on the keyboard, enter and now we can go ahead and hide this sketch so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a straight line out because most designs have some form of flat area that you know the pickups and and the neck etc need to mate to so again this is not going to be mathematically accurate just enough to give you guys an idea of how to do this so let's draw it out to there and i'm going to grab another spline because what i need to do is create a little bit of a recurve here to connect these two so spline, control point spline, draw out from here, like this, and back, enter. Okay, and let's make sure these are collinear, so that way the curvature is the same. And then let's go ahead and adjust this as necessary. So let's bring back this sketch and make sure the apex of this roughly lines up with the apex of right here. And that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and hit finish, and that one's already done. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and loft this to show you how the loft is gonna work. And then we can go ahead and create rails to further control what that curvature is gonna look like. So this can be done with both a solid loft or a surface loft. So if I come up here and hit loft, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loft from this section to the center. Oop, I had something already selected. We're gonna loft from this section to the center section to this section, kind of like a book. Now, if I were to hit okay, you can see we already have essentially a carved top, but maybe we don't like what this loft is doing and we wanna provide a little bit more control over the shape. 
So that's where rails come in. So let's go ahead and delete this loft. And what we need to do in order to establish rails is we need to create planes at the apex of every one of these curves. So we have one here, here, and here. So let's go ahead and you can do offset planes or playing along path or however you want to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and do offset planes because it's the simplest from this section. And I'm going to look at the top view here. I'm going to make sure it roughly lines up with the apex of these curves. Hit OK. Another plane from here. Look at the top. Drag it to the apex of that curve. Hit OK. Another plane from here. Drag it out. And roughly to the apex of that curve as well. Okay, I think that's going to be all right. And now what we can do is we can use those planes to sketch the different cross sections to control the curvature. So let's go ahead and sketch on this plane right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project in the geometry that we've already drawn. So that way any rails that we draw, we can guarantee will connect and loft appropriately. So what we're going to do is we're going to project include intersect. And I'm going to select this line, this line, this line, and that one. Hit OK. And now I can actually go ahead and hide those two sketches. And let's hide our other planes and we can draw our curvature between here. So for the time being, I didn't mean to hit circle. So for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and do spline, control point spline. And I'm going to come out, up, across, down, and over. Okay. Now, I find that it's very helpful to do this all in one spline rather than mirroring anything over. I've just found that it tends to work a little bit better. So let's go ahead and make these two horizontal. And let's make these equal. So that way there's a little bit of symmetry going across this section. And let's make this spline coincident to this point. So that way we know it's going to cross through. Let's make this horizontal. So that way it's coming perfectly tangent or curvature at the top. And then all we need to do is basically constrain this so that way it doesn't get a little haywire on us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a midpoint line from here to here. Make that a construction line. And make that vertical so that way we guarantee that that's going to be symmetric. And if I wanted to, I could give that a dimension to lock that one down, and then this one a dimension, and then we'd have a fully constrained spline. Now, I'm not going to constrain these for the time being, just for example purposes. So let's go ahead and just get something roughly like what we want. I think that will look pretty good right about there. Hit OK. And the first one's done. And now we can go and do the second one. So let's go ahead and sketch on this plane. And we will go project include intersect. It's exactly the same process. Click these four four lines, hit OK, hide the other two, and draw our spline. So spline, control point spline, here, up, across, down, over, done. Make these two horizontal and we'll make them equal. Make that horizontal. Make this one connect to here. And let's draw a midpoint line from here to here. Make that construction and make that vertical. So that way we have a, this spline pretty much under control. And then let's uh, see, let's get this a little bit more extreme in the center. Just for visual purposes. Okay, I think that's going to be okay. Hit okay. And now we can, if we wanted to, we could show both of these. So there's our two um, rails. And let's draw one more. Sketch on that plane, exact same thing. Project include, intersect this line, this one, this one, and this one. Hit OK. Hide the other sketches. And let's draw our control point spline. So one more time. Up, cross, over, down, over, done. Make these horizontal. Make these equal. Now, again, you could drag this below to create some recurve if you needed to. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. Let's create our midpoint line from here to here. Make that construction. Make it vertical. And we need to make this coincident to that line. Okay, and we're right back to where we were. So let's go ahead and drag these out. 
something like that. Sure. Okay. So now what we can do is we can actually come back and reloft this with all of these different rails that we've added. So let's go ahead and do solid loft from this section to the middle. Oh, I had something selected already. I need to delete these. From this section to this section to this section. And then we're going to click add a rail. And the first one's going to be here. And you can see we've got a little bit of a pinch section already. So we're going to control that with the second one here. And the third one we're going to add up here. And then hit OK. And let's hide our sketches. And now we have a carved top basically how we wanted it or how we sketched it. Now by doing this as a solid, the bottom is already flat for us. So if we wanted to make this like a drop top, all we have to do is just extrude that down, let's say like a quarter of an inch. And now we already have a drop top that we can throw on top of our design. Now let's say for example that you wanted to do this as a surface and let's say you want to do this as like a hollow body or something like that. So I'm going to delete that loft and we're just going to do the same thing in the surface loft. So in the surface tab, we're going to go loft and let's reshow our sketches. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to, but instead of doing from the profile here, we're going to come from the edge. So from this edge to this edge, oh, delete that. From this edge, new profile. This one, hold control and select this other one because they're two separate pieces. And then do our third edge here. Now we've basically at the same point. The only difference is it's hollow underneath. And now we'll do a rail here, another rail here, and another rail here. Now we've done the exact same thing. The only difference is the bottom side is also curved. But you've got a hollow section here. So let's go ahead and modify reverse normal. So that way it flips the face. And let's say you wanted to do a hollow section, right? So there's two different ways to do this. You can either um, thicken and thicken this surface. So let's say like this, what that does is it gives you the thickness, but it retains the hollow inside surface of that. But the downside to thicken is that these edges aren't perfectly vertical, right? So you can see there's a taper here. So if you wanted something like that, that was perfectly vertical, but you wanted to retain that hollow inside portion, what you could do instead is you could come up to your bodies, click that body, copy, paste, drag it down whatever dimension you wanted. So let's say 0.25 or negative 0.25. Hit OK. So now we have two copies of the same thing and now we just need to connect them. So I can select extrude, select that outer profile, go up by 0.25, hit OK. And now we have the whole thing and we can just stitch it together. Hit OK. And so now we have vertical walls along the whole side here, but we also have a, um, a carved top and a hollow underneath. So this would be great for like violin making or hollow body guitars, etc. So before we go ahead and close out the video, let me show you what the curvature combs, or not the curvature combs, the zebra analysis look like. You can get an idea of what kind of curvature you're getting out of this. That is basically flawless um, curvature on both sides of the guitar. There's really no major peaks or valleys or anything because we used uh, lofts rather than patches or anything like that. Now also what we could do is go inspect and iso curve analysis. Now this is where it's a little interesting because in theory you'd want the iso curves to wrap around the bottom like this rather than coming to a point. And because we lofted it the way we did, it does come to a point. I don't think that really matters in the long run, but if you do want the ISO curves to properly wrap around the end, you would have to loft it slightly differently. So what you could do is loft from, uh, from here to here. So you'd have to split this line. So you'd loft up to this section then loft from this rail to this rail to this rail, and then loft the final section. So instead of lofting from this side to this side, you loft from this side to this side, and you could achieve something slightly different. Now, I typically don't do that because when I'm doing this kind of a method, I'm trying to rough in an idea. I'm trying to get an idea of 
what I want this guitar top to look like, and then I can come in and do some refinements. Now, one other thing that most of you who are actually going to apply this to your models may want to know is that you could also draw a, you could pre-draw your flat section. So let's say, let's go ahead and draw this just for example. Now I'm not gonna actually model the whole thing. So let me come up to spline. And let's say I wanted a flat section that was like, <laughs> it's gonna be a really bad drawing, I apologize. You know, maybe I wanted a section like that on top of the guitar that was flat for all my pickups, etc. You could totally do that, but you'd need to draw it on that plane right there. And then your rails would intersect with this sketch rather than going through the center line. I hope that makes sense. Basically, when you create your planes and you create your rails, you'd project intersect that line and draw your rails to connect to that line. And then that way you can make sure that everything lines up the way you expect and you can patch that flat section, etc. All right, well, there you have it. A simple yet pretty bulletproof technique to get good results with simple carved top designs. Now, like I said at the beginning, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So I will show you more of those techniques when I get around to making, let's call it more recognizable <laughs> designs. But I hope this gives you a pretty good understanding of what we were trying to accomplish, some of the techniques involved, and simplify the process for you enough to go ahead and get started and make it not feel so overwhelming. So give this a try. Let me know what you think. I will see you in the next video. This is Austin signing out.